What will you mean by emissary veins? Now, this is the veins of the skull. Emissary veins are valveless veins. Valveless, it has no valve. They connect the superficial veins of the skull with the diploic veins of the skull bones and through them with the intracranial venous sinuses. So they are important. Why? Because any infection from outside will enter into the inside of the vein through these veins. Now, this is the action of the occipital frontalis muscle. This corrugation of the scalp, we can see it clearly here. So the frontal belly of the occipital frontalis can raise the eyebrows in expression of surprise or uh, horror. Like this. Which nerve is responsible for this action? This is the temporal branch or the facial nerve. So when is, there is a paralysis of the facial nerve, we see we cannot see this corrugation of the skin in the scalp. Now, lymphatic drainage of the scalp, this is a picture. We have lymphatic vessels in the anterior part of the scalp and forehead, so it will drain into the submandibular lymph node. And this is important also if we have any infection or tumor or any pathology, this in the anterior part of the scalp, it, the, we, we, we will see a submandibular lymph node enlarged. Second, we have a drainage from the lateral part of the scalp above the ear. It will go into the superficial parotid, as we said, pre-auricular lymph nodes. I put a red circle about it here in the figure. The third one is the lymphatic vessels in the part of the scalp above and behind the ear. Will it be drained into the mastoid nodes as seen here in the red circle? Now, the vessels in the back of the scalp will be drained into the occipital nodes. See here in this figure also in the red circle. And all these groups of lymph nodes are drained into deep cervical group of the lymph nodes in the neck. We see it also in a red cell. Now, lastly, we have the face. The face extends from the lower border of the mandible to the hairline. That is, the forehead is common for face and scalp. So we will say forehead. It, it is a term, it means the face and the skull. It extends laterally to the ear, auricle. Layers of the face, first we have skin, it is thick, has rich blood supply, rapid healing, so the, the injury in the face will be rapidly healed. Second, superficial fascia, it contains muscles, vessels, and nerves of the face. And it has no deep fascia in the most of the face. Why it will, uh, this is made to allow for facial expression. So we have no deep fascia. The facial muscles, they are thin, flat muscles connected to the dermis of the skin, innervated by the facial nerve. This is the motor, considerable in individual variation, often blend into each other. It relaxes skin tension lines, run perpendicular the direction of the muscle fibers. They have, we have groups of muscles of the face. The first is the forehead muscles. This is, we have front, frontalis, procerius, corrugator, superior, sali. The most important one, you should know it, the orbicularis oculi. This why? Because it closes eye and the press pro, like a circle around the eye. Nasal muscles, we have nasalis, we have depressor septi nasi, levator libiae superioris aliqua nasi. All these muscles, this is for the nose muscles. 
this, they are very small muscles. Hip muscles, we have to divide in, to, uh, into the three groups. The group that insert into the mandible, like orbicularis oris, around the mouth, it will close the mouth. Boxinator, this is orbicularis oris, and boxinator is very important. It presses lips and cheek against the teeth. And rhizorius, it throws the uh, uh, commissure laterally. And we have levator anguli oris that, uh, that is elevate the commissure. And we have depressi, depressor anguli oris that depress and moves laterally commissure. And we have the gomoticus major elevate and moves laterally commissure. So now the most important them, uh, one of this group is the orbicularis oris and the boxinator and the, and the zygomaticus major muscle. We should know uh, the action of these important muscles. Group two, we have, they are of the lip muscles. They are inserted into the upper lip, like levator ribli superioris, levator ribli superioris lequanasi, zygomaticus minor. This is very small and not very important muscles. Group three, we have, this is that the muscles where they insert into the lower lip. All these are the lip muscles. Look, we have mandibular to the upper lip and to the lower lip. The, to the lower lip, we have depressor libri inferioris, mentalis, and platysma. Platysma will depress the lower lip. The most important one from this group is the platysma in the group three muscle. The near supply of the face. The facial nerve. It innervates muscles of the facial accessory. So it is an, an, a motor nerve for the uh, facial muscles. It excites through the stylomastoid foramen. This is very important. And cross parotid gland, where it divides into six major brands. Every student should know, should know the, the, these brands. The primes are named according to the region, the, the region that supply by the facial nerve. So from above to below, we have the temporal, second zygomatic, third buccal, four marginal mandibular, and five cervical, and the seventh is the posterior auricular, six, sorry, is the posterior auricular branch arises proximal to the parotid, there is a significant variability in the courses and uh, herbalization of this nerve from patient to patient. But we should know these six brands of the facial nerve. Now, that is the motor supply. Now we will take the sensory supply. The sensory supply, sensory innervation to the face is provided of the brands of the trigeminal nerve. It has a three brines, ophthalmic division, second, V2, maxillary division, again, according to the region. The third is the mandibular division. Now, every student should know the main brines of each tributary of these. Now, the ophthalmic division, it has a supraorbital and supratrochlear nerve and palpebral branch of the lacrimal nerve and infratrochlear nerve and external nasal branch of the anterior ethmoidal nerve. V2 or maxillary nerve, it has an infraorbital nerve, zygomatic facial nerve, and zygomatic temporal nerve. So it has three branches. Again, the mandibular division, it has a mental branch, buccal branch, and auricular temporal nerve. These branches for each nerve and each tributary should be known. So the nerve supply of the face, this is the motor by facial nerve, which supplies all muscles of the face, except levator palpebral superioris by oculomotor. This is present in the, uh, the upper eyelid. Again, the sensory by brines of trigeminal nerve, 
except the skin covering the ankle of the mandible, it is supplied by greater auricular nerve from cervical plexus. This exception should be known for each student. Now, it has ophthalmic division, and this is the branch. I collect it from the last table, supratrochlear, supraorbital, parapapular branch of lacrimal and nerve, infratrochlear, and external nasal. Again, the second branch, maxillary division, three branches we have, zygomaticofacial, zygomaticotemporal, and infraorbital. Again, the third one is the mandibular division. It has the mental branch, buccal branch, and auricular temporal nerve. We should know, every student should know, should know these branches of the now, the arterial supply, the face is supplied by branches of the external carotid and the internal carotid artery. We have A, two main branches of the external carotid, that is the facial artery and superficial temporal artery. The main branches of internal carotid artery that supply the medial upper face and the scalp is the ophthalmic artery. This is a branch from the internal carotid artery. So the arterial blood supply is seen here. In the uh, figure, we have mainly is by the facial artery. It is a tortuous course. It has a tortuous course, the facial artery. It gives the following branch in the face. First, inferior labial to the lower lip, superior labial to the upper lip, and the venous drainage of the scalp and face. We have the supratrochlear and supraorbital vein will collect to form the anterior jugular vein. And the, again, we have the maxillary vein that is the superior temporal vein will uh, go to the retromandibular vein. The retromandibular vein, it has anterior division and posterior division. Now the anterior division will just join the anterior facial vein to form the common facial vein. The common facial vein will go to the internal jugular vein. While the posterior division with the postauricular vein we will go and to uh, join the external jugular vein. So the main venous drainage of the scalp and face will be into internal jugular vein and external jugular vein as seen in this uh, shadow or this schedule. Now the external jugular vein will go to the subclavian vein and the occipital veins drains into suboccipital plexus of veins. This is the main scheme of the just of the venous drainage of the scalp. And this is figure will 